Hey everybody, welcome to Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza, and we've got such an amazing guest on deck today, Dr. Kenan Bridges. Okay, like, wow. If you don't know who he is, you've been missing out. Okay, because anytime Dr. Kenan comes on the broadcast, he always brings new, deeper levels of revelation that just pop off in the, from the scriptures. I mean, his insights are incredible. And you, you end up going like this the entire broadcast. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, literally, that's how I... I feel like that when I listen to him preach. So I know you guys are going to get blessed. Look, I want you guys to chat in right now because I lost some of my chat. So please chat in again right now because I'm watching the feed right now. And I some of you guys went away. So chat in where you're watching from. Say hi to Dr. Keenan. Say hey, hey, hey now to Katie Souza. All right. And chat in where you're from. If you are not on your device, get on your device, guys. You got to be involved in this chat because as Dr. Dr. Kenan leads us through today's subject, which is dealing and uncovering familiar spirits. You're going to be resonating. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had that for sure. And you're going to want to get involved in the chat. So get on the chat. Get on My Faith TV on Facebook or Katie Souza on Facebook. Okay, I'm seeing you guys coming back again. Thank you, Jesus. We got Germany's on the line. We've got Ohio, Rhonda from Ohio, Anna from Brazil, Jane from Lakeland, Florida, Susan from Florida, Anna from UK. Greetings from in UK from Sonia also. Uh, Lana's watching from Sacramento, California. Linda says, Shalom, people of promise. Miss Shalom to you, Linda. Praise God. Brenda say, I am joining live from London, UK. Okay, we've got uh, South Pacific. What is it? Van Uta. It sounds like a Simone Island, is it? Vanatu. But not to South Pacific. Oh, that's awesome. Billy's watching from there. We've got um, New Jersey from Celeste saying, hey, now from New Jersey. Marlena is giving us the wave with the Canadian flag there. Pakistan is watching. Cedar Rapids, Idaho, um, Iowa, Northern Ireland, Washington State, Japan. Watching from, watching from Georgia says K. Watching from Hollywood, California. That's Katie. Keep chatting in, you guys. Long Island's on the line. People are just chatting in from Kentucky, Delaware, all over the place, Texas, Hannibal, Missouri. Thanks for watching, guys. You are going to enjoy today's show so much. It's going to be totally amazing as we bring Dr. Keenan online. But first, watch with amazement today's selfie miracle testimony video. Check it out. What's your name? Angela Amos. What did you have, Angela? I had a metal rod in my spine, and I had a knob at the top. A knob at the top? Yes. How long have you had it? Um, since I was 20, and I'm 52 now. 32 years. Did it cause you pain? Yes. Come here, everybody that touched it. Okay, what's your name? Amanda. Did you feel the knot? Yes. What's your name? Sheena Burns. Did you feel the knot? Yes. Who else felt the knot? Yes, you felt it too? Venus. Yeah, how, you felt the knot? Yes. Everybody touch her now. What's up with that knot? It's gone. It's gone? It's all the way gone. It's all the way gone? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Angela, reach back there. Touch that knot. Is it still there? No. Let's give God a big praise. Come on. <laughs> God be working some miracles up in prison. Amen. Come on. Yes, I love it. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious work. We give you the honor and the glory right now that you would do such amazing things for your people, especially for your people in captivity. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you have given men authority on earth to walk in the miracles that you walked in when you were here. And we thank you are going to do even more and we decree it in Jesus' name. More on this broadcast, Lord, right now. And don't forget if you've ever had a miracle you need to send in your selfie video testimony come on get your phone out do a short clip tell me what was up tell me what you had tell me how you suffered tell me what level of pain you had and tell me what happened when God touched you on this broadcast and then send it to selfies email it to selfies at katiesouza.com that is selfies at katiesouza.com 
Chicago.com. Chicago is watching. Hey, Yolanda. Linda from Nevada. We've got Inez from, from Fresno, California. I used to sling dope out of there. <laughs> Just saying. Donna from Oklahoma. We got Kata Kata Kata. I'm sorry, I can't even pronounce your name, but it, it looks gorgeous. Your name Kata T Tu Ipalatu from Australia. Wow, that's amazing. King Joe is tuning in from Nairobi, Kenya. Connecticut is watching. Thank you, Patty, for chatting in. Kenzie from Houston, Texas. Cychelis. I don't know where Cychelis is, but Vanessa says, hey, from Cychelis. I hope I said it right. We got Maria from Sweden. Wow. So UK, London, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, California, Alabama. Wow. Keep chatting in, guys, and share the broadcast because right now we're about to bring Dr. Kenan Bridges on deck. Welcome him now. Dr. Keenan, whenever they saw your name, they start jumping on. I mean, we even have Taiwan, Bosnia, and India on the line today. <laughs> I'm so glad to be on here. Thank you, Sister Katie. What a wonderful opportunity. Oh, everybody Thank loves you. it when you come on, and everybody gets healed, they get a breakthrough, they feel the movement of the spirit. And I agree. I love when you come on because I sit here and pray along with you. And listen to the revelation and I get healed. So I know today we're going to be talking about overcoming familiar spirits. What yeah. is a familiar spirit so everyone's clear? When we talk about a familiar spirit, we're talking about, of course, a disembodied evil spirit, an unclean spirit. But actually the term familiar spirits appears in the in the Old Testament. And it talks about uh, it talks about that. The Israelites were prohibited from consulting familiar spirits. And oftentimes familiar spirits, um, uh, for example, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19, is seek, uh, seek to them that have familiar spirits and to wizards that peep, whisper, and that mutter, should not people seek to their God for the living to the dead. In other words, what people would do is they would go to people with familiar spirits and these individuals would be able to tap into information mm. that was familial. It was not only familiar, it was familial, meaning that this information was connected to certain bloodlines. And the reason ah. why those familiar spirits knew about certain people and about certain uh, individuals is because those were the unclean spirits assigned to that bloodline. Mm. And those bloodline assignments are established through iniquity and transgressions. In other words, uh, an example of this, if you look at Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, I, I want people to really think about this. In Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, their sin was that they ate a piece of fruit. Mm. By Genesis 4 their son committed the act of murder. <laughs> wow. By the fifth chapter of Genesis, people are committing so much atrocities that God can't even stand it anymore. Wow. So what, what is happening? Iniquity is inviting greater manifestations of the demonic. One sin opened the door to all kinds of demonic spirits so that in one generation, Cain became a murderer. And when he murdered his brother Abel, listen to what God says. He says in Genesis 4, he says, sin is crouching at the door. Whoa. In some translations, wow. it says that sin crouches lying in wait for its prey. Wow. And that's the assignment of a familiar spirit. These iniquitous uh, agreements invite the presence of these unclean spirits and they lay in wait. They lay at the edge looking for a legal ground to pounce on their victims. Wow. And that's exactly what happens when we talk about familiar spirits. Um, these can be addictions. These can be compulsions, perversions, uh, a marriage breaking spirits. You know, everybody in the family can't stay married. Uh, everybody wow. in the family struggles with alcoholism or addiction. You know, everybody, every male in the family can't keep a job or you know, uh, you're prone to accidents. You've been in seven accidents in the last year. Mm. You know, uh, things like this are oftentimes indicative 
there may be the presence of a familiar spirit. So you're saying, Dr. Keenan, that, that like the people that are watching right now can diagnose if they have a familiar spirit in activity in their life by looking at a pattern in their family bloodline? Yes, patterns, familial patterns. Uh, for example, you'll find that uh, in, in certain bloodlines, women get divorced at the same age. Mm. You know, your mother got divorced at 40. Her mother got divorced at 40. Her mother got divorced. And mm. you'll find these kinds of things uh, persisting in families. Uh, I'll give an example. My bloodline, if I look at my family, you know, my I was the first person to not go to go to college in my family. None of the men in my family had ever gone to college. Wow. Here's what happens. Even though I got to college, which broke that pattern, it was extreme. I got to a point in my wow. collegiate uh, career where I couldn't finish no matter what. It's like it was like, you know, something would just happen, whether it was a financial setback or distraction, something would happen. And there was a force trying to resist me wow. from from finishing school. Wow. Even though I had gone to college and I was born again in Spiritfield. And so I think a lot of times people need to look at I, I tell people, take inventory of the patterns. You see, there, there's wow. power in the pattern. The pattern is powerful because it reveals demonic activity. You know, when you look at the pattern, the pattern doesn't lie. If certain things keep happening, I'll give you another example. There's some women watching me right now, and you go from one abusive relationship to another. You know, hey, I, I God delivered me from that abuse. I go to a different city. Mm. I may even get with a man that's of a different ethnicity, but he has exact same spirit. Maybe he's wow. controlling, manipulative, narcissistic, and you keep choosing the same kind of person over and over and over and over again. And you that continues to happen until that demonic power is confronted. Mm. And that's that's what that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, Overcoming Familiar Spirits, because I saw in the body of Christ, with all the knowledge that we have and all the understanding we have of spiritual warfare, people were still losing the battles as it relates to their lives and ministries because there were these insidious things working in their lives that they could not really identify. You know, I, I that is so good that you said that story about you know, your college experience. Look guys, you have to look at the patterns. And right now, if you see a pattern in your bloodline, in your family of behaviors, addictions, even like deaths where people die early or diseases where, you know, people are, you know, constantly getting disease in your, in your family, your grandmother, your great grandmother, your grandfather, your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers. I mean, that's why doctors even say to you, they'll even ask you what your history is in your family of sickness like cancer right. or diabetes yep. because even they understand that there's something going on in the generations they probably just don't understand that many times that affliction is executed by a demonic power okay mm -hmm. but I love how you said you know you broke the pattern by being the first person first man male to go to college but yet because you broke the pattern probably out of sheer will and determination Yes. But the demonic spirit that had stopped and created stopped everybody from going to college was still there and resisted right. you being successful in that place. Exactly, exactly. So that means you guys, you could be as tenacious as all get out and you could break that pattern and be the first one to become a doctor or the first one to go to school or the first one not to die at an early age. But if you haven't done deliverance, and identified and gotten rid of that demonic spirit of a of, of, of familiar spirit, you're going to be fighting a battle tooth and nail, correct? Very correct. And an example is you talked about premature death, right? Um, there is a spirit of premature death that is, is in the bloodlines. In fact, the term generational curses, it's two words, gene, meaning our genome or our oh. genetic codex, and ration or ration means an allocation. Uh, in other words, a, a generational is a rational or a ration of genes. Wow. Now, this is important to understand because the devil, he tags genes. We can look at, scientifically, we can look at a person's genetic codex 
and we can know so many things about them without ever meeting them. Right. They can look at your genetic code and tell what issues you will have sometimes before you're even born. That's how that's how uh, explicit our genes are. So the devil is not omniscient, but he is observant. I want people to hear what I just said. He's not omniscient, mm. but he is observant. Wow. And what does he do? He observes the bloodlines. He observes the genes. He, wow. he looks at the rations of genes and he tags certain things to certain genetic lines. So, for example, when you talk about the spirit of premature death, like maybe your uncle, your grandfather or father died early, their father died early. And here you are, you're born again, right? And so mm. you're, you're still alive past the time that they died, but, but maybe you're prone to accidents. Maybe you're always, you're having to pray, Lord, protect me because, you know, you're just driving and a, a car tries to sideswipe you or something's always happening mm. because there's a demonic assignment lingering. Even though you've broken the pattern, the assignment is still there. And mm. so what you're finding yourself having to do is to fight all the time. You know, you, you fight all the time. It's like a person who, um, let's say, for example, you know, a person grew up, their parents never went to church. That's that's an antichrist spirit. So basically, if a person has had the spirit of antichrist in their bloodline where their parents weren't really in the church, their, their, their grandparents weren't really in the church, and they never were church, so here they are, they're born again, but they struggle to go to church. It's like, you know, I, I don't feel like it. Like Sunday comes and they have to drag themselves out of the bed you know, they can't really do midweek services. That's a bit too much. And they think it's their job schedule or their energy level. But it's really a, an assignment to perpetuate that same thing in that bloodline. Gosh, my yeah. God. So look, guys, do you see the pattern? You know, somebody just chatted in. Yes, I believe it. My brother died at 21 and my daughter died at 21. This, yeah. th that's a pattern. There's a pattern. That is a pattern. Do, what other patterns are you guys seeing? Because we're about to uncover these familiar spirits that have been literally, quote, haunting your generational bloodlines for decades hundreds of years even thousands of years and we yep. need to kick them to the curb what what are the first steps i mean identifying the pattern must be like step number one but then what do you do you know uh, one of the things i teach in uh, when i talk about spiritual warfare is that you have to understand where the devil lives you know we say stuff like you know no devil in hell and, and i've said that for and, and, and god knows your heart he knows what we're trying to communicate but it's important that we understand where he lives. And Paul articulates for us where Satan lives in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. First of all, if Ephesians, uh, the, the, the second and third chapter, he talks about it. He calls him the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter two, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Mm. He calls him the prince of the power of the air meaning that the enemy dwells in atmospheres. His home wow. yeah. is not underneath the earth. His home is in the abodes of the various atmospheres, the, 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 the heavenly realms. And also Paul the apostle tells us in the sixth chapter, his second home. His second home is in Ephesians 6 verse 12. It says, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness. The, the Greek word there for darkness is, is, is the Greek word stotos. And that word means ignorance or spiritual blindness. So Satan has legal residence in your ignorance. Wow. The Come areas on. areas where you are ignorant, he has a legal right to abide in. Wow. So the first step to breaking a demonic power Jesus tells us, or John the Apostle tells us in his uh, gospel account in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, uh, and the Word uh, was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. 
some translations say could not overcome it. The point of that is to say this, the moment you turn the light switch on is the moment you break the power of the enemy because his power is in anonymity. It's in darkness. Mm. It's in the secret. How many, wow. how many of us have family secrets? Right. You know, skeletons in the closet. closet Don't tell yeah. anybody. Don't say nothing about that. We, we ne- we're going to take this to the grave. And no, it's going to take you to the grave. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. If you don't deal with it, it's going to take you to the grave. Wow. And so what the enemy does, he thrives in the dark. So what do we have to do? We have to turn the light on. The Thank moment you, we turn on the light is the moment we disempower the enemy. So that's the first step is turning the light on, allowing the revelation of God, the searchlight of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. When the word of God illuminates our life, what we begin to see is we begin to see the enemy. You know, uh, when you, you know, some people know this, if they've ever had roaches, if you ever stayed in a, a place where there were roaches, yeah, you know, uh, you know, you, you turn the light on and that's when you see the roaches scatter. That You don't see them scatter until you turn the light on. And that's when you start seeing them. They were comfortable in the dark. But when you turn that light on, you exacerbate those roaches. Mm, boy. You know? So it's the same way in the kingdom of God. So the first step is to recognize, you know what? This is demonic. Our people don't realize the power in that. The first thing you got to realize is, this is a demon. You know, I, no, this is not my personality. <laughs> this is not my culture. It's not my upbringing. It's not has nothing to do with my race. This is a demon. Uh, I, this is a demon. And I recognize this is a demon. And guess what? I don't want you here anymore. I don't want you to live here anymore. Yeah, come that on. Is the first step to beginning our path to freedom. Did you hear the simplicity of that? Honestly, you know, people say, you know, you know, there isn't a demon behind every bush. Really? Okay, Christ is bigger than them all. But the thing That's is, correct. as long as we live in the dark in ignorance and believe that when we have Christ that we're not going to be assaulted and that a lot of the issues that we're battling with aren't just, you know, things that happen in the natural, that the enemy is, work, is at work to orchestrate difficult circumstances, to bring about sicknesses, to do all these things. If we just live in the dark and just go, oh, no, none of that's real then you're giving a platform for the enemy to assault you, right? So we can't be ignorant of his, of his wiles. I mean, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, no, that ain't, that ain't from God right there. And I judge that. I mean, we have to do that. And that's the first simplistic step is to say, I reject that behavior. I reject the sickness. This is of demonic origin. This is not Christ. And I rebuke it and I judge it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. Now, look. As we're talking, you know, people are chatting in. I'm just going to share with you some of the things they're saying. I'm, I mean, people are saying, yes, I've got health issues that run in the family line. Um, men that um, complete school but end up in prison. So many of those. Um, one says, I believe this, Dr. Keenan. I've had over 20 injuries. Things like falling down stairs, hit by a bike, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You know, people are saying, I have got the delay and denial, like poverty, lack, delay, denial, um, marriages that don't last in the family. My, my grandmother got divorced. You know, and then there's ones, uh, my brother died of, at 18 in a car accident. Mother, sister, son, 24 suicide. Uh, grandmother's son, 40-year-old heart attack, second marriage son, 30-year-old motorbike accident. I mean, wow. There is suicide, alcoholism, trauma, accidents, and cancer that run in my bloodline. People are seeing the pattern. Now you say, bring it into the light. Okay, talk about, like, let's lead people into the light right now so that that demon can start scattering like a cockroach. You know, one of the things that, that, that we're going to do, we're going to pray right now, but I want people to understand this. One of the things the enemy does is he tries to get people to come into agreement with him by virtue of associating your problem with your person. Mm. Now, I want people to hear what I'm trying to say, because this is going to set thousands of people free right now. When you recognize that, 
my problem is not who I am. See that, that that's the that's the first thing the enemy will tell you. Well, well, they're they're trying to say you're a bad person that you have a demon inside of you. No, no, no. It's just like cancer. The cancer in you or on you is not you. <laughs> it's a radical cell that does not belong. Mm. And so we need to understand that your spirit may be born again. You may be full of the Holy Spirit, but there can be areas in your life that are being oppressed or that are being attacked by the enemy because of your ignorance. You know, Hosea 4, 6 says people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so you need to understand that, you know, we're not trying to tell you that, oh, you, you don't love God or that you're not really saved. No, we're saying there are some rodents in your house that don't belong. Come on. Now it's time to get them out of there. Yes. You're a child of God. You're blood bought. The Holy Ghost lives in you. And there is no room in your life for the devil. And so we're saying he has to get out of there. So right now, I just Jesus. want to speak this prophetically in Jesus name. I declare that the light of the of the countenance of God shines on every dark area in your life, revealing every insidious activity of familiar spirit. And right now we are declaring an eviction notice. We are filing an eviction petition before the courts of heaven so that the court and its power can enforce the removal of every illegal agent. Every tenant that's been living there illegally must be cast out right now in the name of Jesus. We cast out every demonic spirit that has been operating in your life. We break all agreements in the spirit realm that were not forged by God. And we declare that anything that the Lord Jesus did not plant in your soul is uprooted by the fire of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and by the word of God. And we command it to go from you now and that you will begin to see, you know what, this is what God has for me. And I'm going to walk in it for the rest of my life in Jesus name. Jesus right now. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Now, these demons cause these repeated patterns. So when people identify the pattern, they bring it into the light. What is the first thing they need to pray? Everybody's going to want to know. What is the first thing? They go, wow, you know what? Look, I want you right now, some of you I just realized by the Holy Ghost right now, that some of you are having an aha moment right now. You're saying, wow, that, that, that depression in me that emotional state in me that I keep on having all the time is actually not me. It's demonically orchestrated. Yeah. You're having a revelation right now. Right yeah. now as you're watching this program. Oh wow, that behavior pattern in me, it's not me. Uh -huh. It's from a demonic pressure, a demonic oppression, a demonic manipulation in my life. And you're actually that's realizing right. that right now. So Absolutely. that's the Holy Ghost right now. Now, yep. I want you to tell them, what, what, what's, what's, what do they do right now? As soon as they have that realization, what's the first prayer that they pray? The first prayer, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 18, he says, where two or more of you shall agree is touching anything, you'll have whatever you say. We call that the divine law of agreement. Right, so the first thing, right if, if agreement Jesus, right can invoke God's presence and power, Jesus, right agreement can actually also invite demonic powers wow and if agreement can invite demonic powers then disagreement can uninvite them yes god so the first prayer we need to pray mm. is a prayer to break agreement wow. with the demonic power come on i break agreement I break with agreement. this spirit of premature death I break with agreement agreement. with this marriage breaking spirit. Right, with this I marriage break marriage agreement marriage with the spirit of poverty. I break us I I break agreement with the spirit of chaos. I break agreement with the spirit of infirmity. So the moment you break the agreement, you now remove the legal rights. And see, and then the second thing is repentance. You know, repentance is not just groveling on the floor begging God for mercy. You know, there's a part of repentance that is definitely a, a petition before God to forgive us. But there's another part of the word repentance, metanoeo. It means to change your mind. Uh, Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 
verses one through four, he talks about though we though we uh, 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 walk in the flesh, we do not war after after the flesh. For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so what we begin to understand then is that when we break agreement, the second step is the repentance and the mind renewal. We have to recognize that, okay, if this is not me, this is someone else. And that someone else is not from God. And so I break agreement with that someone else. Yes, and now I change my mind. I turn from the path I've been going on. Mm-hmm. You know, years ago, my uh, I had a, uh, a cousin. There was a, a, we had a particular cousin, and this cousin's daughters, they all wrestled with diabetes. The first one actually died at the age of 24 wow. from diabetes. And then I saw, I, I went to that funeral. This is before I was in ministry, before I really uh, was was uh, as knowledgeable as I am now. But I went to that funeral. And at that funeral, I saw that her sister, no, I'm sorry, her cousin was also dealing with the debilitating effects of diabetes. And I walked up to her and I said, you do know that you don't have to die, do you? She says, no, I didn't know that. Huh. I didn't know that. I said, yeah, this doesn't have to take you out. And later on, unfortunately, she ended up passing away. Oh, boy. And then her mother passed away from the same condition. So once you recognize, you know what? I don't agree with this. Not only that, but I'm turning in a different direction. And then you begin to declare out of your mouth God's purpose. Lord, whatever written in the book, of my destiny concerning me that you've written about my life, that's what I'm going to walk in. Mm. So I not only disagree with the spirit of premature death, I Mm. declare, according to Romans chapter 8, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, glory to God, from the law of sin and death. Therefore, calamity, death, destruction, and chaos have no place in my life Mm. from this point on. They have no place in my life. Mm. I I make no room for them anymore. They can't live here. They can't even rent a space. I'm not an Airbnb. I'm not a hotel room. No, you can't live here, not even for one night. I'm not Motel 6. I'm not going to keep the light on for you. You got to go. Right. (laughs) You you have to take this aggressive stance. No more. No more. I'm not going to be the devil's trash can another day in my life. I'm not going to let the devil dump on my mind, dump on my emotions, dump on my children, dump on my marriage, dump on my ministry. I'm not going to let him hold me back anymore. And when you take that resolve, Sister Mm. Katie, there's something, I mean, I I feel it even now. Somebody's getting angry right now, a righteous anger. And it's not a, it's not an anger toward people. You're angry towards Satan for all the lies he's told you and all the things he's stolen from you, and all the things that you have forfeited in your ignorance, you're saying, man, I'm t- no, I'm tired of being sick and tired, and I want everything that God has for me. This begins the process of you breaking out of the patterns and breaking out of the strongholds of the enemy will seek to establish in your life. I want you to listen to that very, very carefully, okay? Look, these familiar spirits have been assigned to your generational generational bloodline, which means they've been around for a long, long time. Yep. And with them, they're bringing all of these behaviors and these sicknesses and the poverties and everything else. So when you recognize the pattern, I bring it into the light, you, you see it, and then you take a stance, you break your agreement with it. The next thing you're going to have to do is, is repentance. It's metanoia. It's not just asking for forgiveness, but to change your mind, which means you have to, uh, now he said the key word, aggressively. They've been around for hundreds of years. You think they're just gonna depart? Sometimes you gotta be like, I am not gonna agree with you anymore. I'm done. I will not be depressed. I will not be anxious. I'll break that agreement. I changed my mind. I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be joyful. You've gotta shift out. And sometimes that battle right there is gonna be exactly that. It's gonna be warfare. It's gonna be a battle. You've gotta shift. You've got every time that depressive thought comes or that anxious thought comes, you gotta go, no, I said, 
I will not let this thing become, I've let it become familiar to me. That's why it's a familiar spirit, because it's so right. familiar to you, okay? Yeah. I've, I've let it become familiar. I, I'll break my agreement with that. I will not be depressed anymore. I am not going to be anxious anymore. You're going to have to fight, and it's going to come back, and you have to resist it again. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Resist the right. devil, and he will flee. You're going to have to keep it up, guys. And when that thought comes, you're going to have to open your mouth and decree against it. And then it will come again, and it will come again, and it will come again. But you keep on pushing back and pushing back, and then finally, that resistance wall will break. Is That's that right. true? Have you seen that? I've seen it. Absolutely true. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it any better. Um, mm. and, and the reality is, you know what I'm thinking about? The image I have is a, a, an abusive relationship. You know, imagine a woman is in a toxic relationship. And she's in an abusive relationship with a narcissistic man or a man with a narcissistic woman. I'm not trying to play gender uh, bias here, but I'm saying imagine that relationship. Now, the first thing he's going to do or she's going to do when you try to leave, they're going to play the mind game. You know, I, I you know, don't don't leave. Hey, I made you some eggs. Come on, stay. You know, <laughs> I bet you I, I bought you I bought you some flowers, you know, just 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 give me another chance. They're going to try to woo you back under their control. Oh, that's just like and the demon. Just like the demon. That's the point. <laughs> they, it's the same thing. The devil is going to try to woo you back under his control. You know, when you start to come out, I've seen this so many times. When you start to come out from under that demonic influence, the enemy will play the mind game. Just like that abusive person, that abusive uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, that, that uses manipulation and he'll try to use fear and he'll try to use anxiety. You know, maybe I'm getting too deep in this, you know, maybe, maybe I'm over spiritualizing this, you know, it's not, it's not that it's just everybody deals with depression sometimes. And it's not, and, you know, it's just not, I mean, I, 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 you know, I got my friend over here, she loves the Lord and she's on depression medication. I, she's a great person. And the enemy's trying to woo you back under his control. He's trying to get you, to talk yourself out of the disagreement. Wow. But you got to be like the woman. Now, I remember the movie, uh, What's Love Got to Do With It with Tina Turner. And mm -hmm. one day she says, you know what? <laughs> I'm not taking it anymore. And she fought him and he beat her up. But she said, this will be the last time you'll ever beat me. And she walked away from that toxic relationship. And I, I, I believe that we need to walk out of these, 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 these caverns and cauldrons that the enemy has tried to cook us in and, and keep us in. And we need to say, you know what? This is the last time. This is the last time. And I read a book many years ago. I would really encourage believers to read. It was called The Epoch of Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was a freed slave, and he was uh, an abolitionist. And he talks about the, the day he became free. Now, ironically, Sister Katie, the day he became free, that he says he became free, he was still technically a slave. What happened was that his master was beating him one day and something rose up inside of him and says, I'm not taking this anymore. He took the whip from his master and he started whipping him and they fought. <laughs> and they fought so hard, he, he got beat up, the master got beat up, and the master was so shocked that one of his teenage slaves would beat him that he said, you know, I'm sending you to another plantation. But Frederick Douglass says that was the moment he was emancipated. Wow. Even though he was still physically enslaved, he made up in his mind, I will never be oppressed again. Come on. And I don't know who, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to understand, you got to make up in your mind. You know, even if the enemy is attacking you, even if you're fighting through things, make up in your mind. I'm never going to be in this kind of bondage again. I'm never going to be addicted again. I'm never going to be bound with perversion again. I'm never going to be bound with fear and anxiety again. You have the makeup in your mind. The moment you make up in your mind is the moment you walk in freedom. And so I want to encourage everybody, this is the moment to walk in freedom. Look, guys, I think this is for everybody. 
The enemy tries to wear you down and wear you down by continuing with those tormenting thoughts, continuing with that sickness, continuing with that depression, continuing with that fear, continuing with that bitterness and anger, all the things, and you've been resisting and resisting, and, and, and you think, well, I resist all the time, and nothing ever changes. you got to keep filling that cup up with prayer yes, and intercession until that thing finally gets to the top and it overflows in the blessing and the breakthrough. It, sometimes I, I, the enemy will come at me so hard. Sometimes I just lay in my bed. And I go, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just start thanking the Lord. <laughs> I just go, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That's I it. mean, I had one time where I had to do thank you, Jesus, for like three or four hours. And then, boom, the cup filled up and... The breakthrough came. You can't, you can't give up, guys. In fact, right now, I release grace to everyone watching right now. Grace for you to keep going to get the breakthrough. Grace for you to be tenacious. Grace for you to be able to rest while you're battling. Grace for you to be able to trust Christ is fighting for you. Every time you turn your mind away from those demonic thoughts to Christ, and him rising up to protect you because Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. I release that kind of faith and grace mm -hmm. and insight and rest, but tenacity and courage and bravery right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. It's true, isn't it? The enemy tries to wear us down so we can't continue to resist these familiar spirits and their attacks. But if we continue to press it will break it will break and i want to say this to shift a little bit you know uh sometimes these familiar spirits don't only, don't only operate through your mind or in sickness and calamity and stuff like that sometimes they operate through people yeah um an example of this is in esther and i want to encourage somebody with this this word prophetically in the book of esther the third chapter the bible says that a who was the king of persia exalted Haman to the highest nobility in the land. Mm. And it came to pass that when he would walk into the court that everyone would bow. Oh, I, I forgot a point. It says Haman the Agagite, the Agagite, <laughs> Agag. Yes. And he says that he actually would walk into the court and everyone would bow, but Mordecai would not bow. <laughs> Now this is very this is very profound. What happens here in the book of 1 Samuel when God calls uh, Saul king, he anoints the first king Saul and he gives Saul an assignment through the prophet Samuel to kill King Agag and the Amalekites mm. and to utterly destroy them. And and he he you know, he doesn't do what the Lord says. God tells him rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. And he says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, I've rejected you from being king. And of course, I've always wondered, I said, wow, you know, that seemed a bit harsh. David actually committed adultery and murdered someone and conspired and did all kinds of things. And God said, he's a man of his own heart. And Saul committed one uh, uh, real real act of rebellion. Of course, his heart was, was, was not right toward God. But I said, man, it doesn't, doesn't seem like the punishment doesn't seem to fit the crime in those instances. But if you have an understanding of familiar spirits, you will understand. God was actually looking through the genes. He was looking through the generations. Come on. And he saw that this spirit in Agag would seek to eliminate the children of Israel. Yes. And if they were eliminated in Persia, the Messiah could never be born. Yes. So here it is. God was was looking at the genes. It's all in the genes. I don't mean <laughs> Levi Strauss. I mean, it's in the genes, the genetic code. And so what does he say? He says, I want you to utterly destroy him because he did not kill King Agag. Hundreds of years later, Whoa. Agag shows up again through Haman. And the spirit, the familiar spirit of Agag entered into him and he seeks to eradicate the Israelites in Persia. And Mordecai didn't realize that because he wasn't 
it wasn't that he didn't bow to the men. He didn't bow to the spirit. Oh, oh, somebody had to catch that. See, sometimes the reason why you're going through warfare is because you refuse to bow. You refuse to bow. You refuse to subject yourself and to submit yourself to that spirit. And that spirit doesn't like you. <laughs> That's why sometimes you go on your job and that you won't bow to that demon of, of, of homosexuality on the job. And it will rise up and try to attack you. And it's a familiar spirit. And so, and so here it is. We see that these spirits manipulate the bloodline and they enter into the bloodline to execute assignments that were never fulfilled. Wow. To finish the job. Wow. He, that the, the spirit of Agag comes back through Haman wow. to finish what he started. Oh, and sometimes God. we're facing those. And this is why we have to stay on our ground, Sister Katie, because there are some unfulfilled assignments, some unfinished business that the enemy is trying to do. He couldn't do it with your grandmother. And now he wants to do it in your lifetime. He My couldn't God. do it with your father's generation. My now God. he's come back to attack you. You're My saying, God. Lord, this is not fair. Why am I going through this? Why am I getting all of this? Was well, because there is an unfinished assignment that those familiar spirits are trying to finish. But here's, here's the beauty, and I want to encourage someone. The blood of Jesus, oh my God, the blood of Jesus is greater than the demonic assignment. The work Come of on. Christ on the cross is stronger than any familiar spirit that could ever attach your life. What you need to do is apply the blood and appropriate the finished work. And you just say, you know what? Jesus spoiled principalities and powers on the cross, making a show of them openly. And right now I take authority over mm. this demonic assignment. Mm. Maybe it's against your ministry. <clears throat> Maybe it's against your finances. Maybe it's against your marriage. Mm. And, and all of a sudden it's like, man, you, you know, you, you're going strong. You have a better marriage than everybody else in your family. But all of a sudden now it's like the enemy's coming into your marriage. You're saying, man, but we, we had a good marriage and, I know my aunt didn't have a good marriage and my mom didn't have a good marriage, but we had a good marriage. But those familiar spirits are trying to come back to finish the job. You need to recognize that. It's not personal. It's not personal. But you do need to use your authority. You just say, you know what, in Jesus' name, I take authority over this spirit that tried to attack my mother and my grandmother and my father and my Jesus. brothers. And I declare that you will not pass. You're not getting, you're not going to another person in my life. The buck stops here. <laughs> Glory to God. You're not getting through another inch of my life. You, I am the wall. I am the watchman right. who is stopping this thing from coming to, Ooh. you will not work. And this is why, this is why we know in the story that Mordecai tells Esther, for such a time as this, God has raised you up because you are anointed to stop this. Mm -hmm. And we thank God in the text, Haman is hung by his own gallows. <laughs> okay, now, everybody, I did not talk to Dr. Keenan before the broadcast, and he doesn't know that this morning I got the very scripture from Je from Exodus 17, 14, where the Lord tells Moses, <clears throat> write this as a, memorial, as a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out of remembrance Amalek, Amalek from under heaven. And so here God is making a decree. He was saying, that spirit that's on um, Amalek, that's mm -hmm. the same spirit that Saul didn't kill. Okay, right. King Agag and the, and the Malachites, which then was passed down the generations to Haman in the book of yes. Esther, who was this close to annihilating every single Jewish person in, in Persia at that time, which would have wiped out the seed for the Christ child to come forth. Okay, so right. this is the scripture I got this morning, Doc, Dr. Keenan, and, and the Lord wow. told me this. He said, he said, that spirit is coming back. 
to fulfill assignments to stop the people from getting their destiny and their fulfillment and their manifestation. And he goes, and it's coming after you today. And I'm telling you, this entire day has been crazy, like mm. crazy. But now I know that that spirit, if I don't kill it, see, we got to kill it, guys. Right. You got to fight and you got to kill it all the way because Saul didn't <laughs> kill it. And he was judged. And you know what took him out in the very end? He went to seek the... In that chapter where he doesn't kill, where he doesn't kill Agag, King Agag, Samuel said to him, Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and idolatry, and stubbornness as idolatry. Well, guess what took out Saul in the end? He went to go consult a witch. That's right. That's what right. you don't kill... Will kill you. <laughs> we'll come back and it will kill you because it will it will control you and drive you towards it. You got to kill it now. Right now, we decree right now that we were, we are drawing a line in the sand. We draw that line in the sand. We will not let this spirit that has been in our bloodline work through people, work through situations, bring sicknesses, bring diseases, bring poverty, bring lack, separate our marriages, attack our children. We will not let it. We will not let it torment our thoughts. We will not let it control our emotions. We will not let it control and make sick our bodies. We draw the line in the sand and we say, we break our agreement with you and we judge you. We judge every demonic spirit right now. Every spirit, familiar spirit that's been at yeah. work in our bloodline, we judge you in the court of heaven right now. And we refuse to come back into agreement with you ever, 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 ever again. In Jesus' in name. Jesus name. In my Jesus God. Name. Wow. My God. Come on. Oh, you know, you said something profound. Joshua, this is amazing. If I can articulate this to the people of God. I, I know where you're God going tells, and I agree with you. Go, go. <laughs> Joshua, God tells Joshua, be strong and very courageous. And he says, I want you to confront yeah. the giants in the land. The giants. These are the sons of. These are Anak and his sons mm. that are occupying the promised land. Mm. Listen to this. Joshua doesn't finish the job. So here we have Goliath shows up in David's generation. He shows up in David's generation. David confronts Goliath in the valley of Elah, if you study the text. Yep. And this is very significant. What was that? What was significant about that? That valley actually is named after the son of Caleb, who was Joshua's contemporary. Joshua and Caleb spied out the land and saw the giants. So when when a when David is confronting Goliath, it is not a physical battle; it's a spiritual battle. Come on, it's a generational battle. Come on, and I believe, and I can't prove this, but this is what I believe. I believe that a mantle, a transgenerational mantle of authority on. came on David. Wow. And David understood, he saw in the spirit realm that this is not just a giant, a physical giant, but this is an enemy of God. And if I don't defeat this guy, if I don't stop him right now, we're going to be tormented and vexed by his descendants for the rest of our days. So David taps into an anointing an anointing of authority, that Caleb anointing, that doggish anointing that is so stubborn. I'm not going to bow to this thing. Come I, on. I, listen, I'm not going to let him defy the armies of the living God. I'm not going to let this Philistine intimidate us and curse us. And he throws a stone. He had five stones, which is the number of grace. He taps into the supernatural grace of God. And with one stone, he defeats a giant. And then he says, that's not enough. He takes his head off of his Come body. Come on. <laughs> he he <laughs> severs his head as a prophetic act saying, I have cut off your posterity. Come I've on. cut off your bloodline. You not, you can't produce anymore. You are dead. I've cut off the head. I've cut off your authority. And David understood. And this was one of the things that he did that caused him to be able to walk in supernatural favor. And I'll tell you something. There is some favor and some promotion and some breakthrough on the other side of your giant. Come on. <laughs> but you've got to have the boldness. I prophesy of you, I just release a mantle of authority uh, that the cloud of witnesses 
are actually cheering you on and they are they are <laughs> watching they are yeah. watching in the heavenlies and they're saying it's yes it's your time you can do this you got this you got the blood of jesus you got the name of jesus Come you on. got the power of the holy ghost Come you got on. the shield of faith you got yes. the sword of the spirit mm. you are more than equipped to face what's been facing you and God is saying that from today on, Jesus. this is the last time that that spirit is going to have access to your life. This is the last Come time on. that that spirit is going to be able to vex your mind. Somebody haven't been able to sleep at night. You've been dealing with sleep paralysis and sleep apnea, and it's been going. But this is the last time that the giant of Jesus. that infirmity you, is going to be able to torment Jesus. you in Jesus' name. And I declare you are victorious Oof, Jesus. in Jesus' name Kurama. against every satanic assignment. And on the other side of your victory is the greatest healing, the greatest breakthrough, the greatest marriage, the greatest ministry. In fact, I, I even sense now there's a person watching, your ministry has not been able to flourish the way God intended. God's made you some big promises, but it's like there's been this attack in the finances of the ministry, like the giving has been not what it should be. And you've just kind of been plowing through and God's been taking care of you, but there's more. I prophesy to you right now, that from today on, that the spirit of stagnation and delay is totally broken in right Jesus, name. Jesus' name. Right now. And that from today forward, <laughs> the windows of heaven Jesus. are open over your life, your marriage, your ministry, and you're about to see a deluge of blessings and provision and harvest that you've never seen in your life. And it's about to knock your little socks off. I hope you washed your feet because you're about to walk around barefoot in the blessing of God, knowing that if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. I hope that you guys sorry, I just had to received I, 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 every <laughs> bit of that prophetic decree that's been said over you because he said it straight from the court with legal jurisdictional authority over you. Amen. Yeah. And you know where it talks about wiping out the memory of Amalek where the Lord told that to Moses? He said, Moses, now this is what I'm telling you, Moses. I'm going to wipe out even the memory of Am Amalek, but you got to tell that in the ears of Joshua. Joshua, mm. the guy that took the promised land, but he left some stragglers behind that caused major, as in giants, that left major problems. So listen, you got to take your promised land, then you got to hold it, and you got to take it all the way, not just part of the way. So receive those decrees. Play this, play this broadcast over and over again until you break every one of those spirits off of you. Dr. Keenan, we only have like 40 seconds left. You have overcoming familiar spirits. We're putting it up on the board right now. You guys got to get this. If you feel like you haven't broken through all the way into your promised land and you're not holding your promised land, you got to go to Amazon and get overcoming familiar spirits by Dr. Keenan Bridges. It's amazing. Watch this broadcast over and over again and do it until you feel every hindrance has been broken free from you by the name of Jesus and the power of his blood. Dr. Keenan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, my good friend. I so appreciate this, and I hope the people are blessed. It's so awesome. Guys, and I hope you are blessed. Chat in any other things that you felt during the broadcast. If you felt anything lifting, chat it in and let me know about it so that I can share your testimonies wherever I go. And my name is Katie Souza. I'll see you guys next week.